Chapter 44 Nick I didn't take my eyes off her even once as I let her do what she did with my body. That she wanted. That phrase could mean any man's dream and it would never have. I thought she would use it to let bullshit be drawn on my skin, but... Watching her as I pleased, just as I was doing at that moment, was priceless. Was. So focused on running the ink over my skin and whatever she was writing and drawing that I was not aware of how incredibly beautiful I found it at that time. Instant. Her cheeks were tinted with a light blush and her eyelashes were wet from crying. I know she shouldn't be such a bitch, but she loved how her lips looked after. Cry, it made me want to kiss her until there were no more hours left. I took advantage of her distraction to soak up each of her gestures and took the opportunity to caress her legs and thighs carefully while she continued immersed in her task. When my hand went too low for her, sneaking into forbidden places her. Her eyes sought mine and stopped my movements. Stay there, she said with an amused smile and then fixed her gaze on my wrist. I let her do it while she draws one last thing on my skin. I'm done, she said, then she closed the marker with the cap and lowered her face. Until he could lightly kiss my lips. This thing about being still for so long with. She half naked on top of me had suffered complete torture. Holding her waist I rolled her until I was on top of her. And now what am I supposed to do? I asked, supporting my weight with my hands. Her forearms so as not to crush her on the mattress. Her hand went up to my face and. He stroked her hair carefully. Go out there and show the world my masterpiece, she said with an amused glow on her face. Look at her. I ground my hips against hers, feeling her so weak beneath me, so. Small and so incredibly perfect. A lump got stuck in my throat when she. I realized that these moments were not going to happen as often as I wanted. Was going to. Having to let her go, having her live on campus surrounded by assholes who would fight. To get her attention. Suddenly neither my kisses nor anything she could say to me. They were enough to make me feel like no one could take her away from me. Last night she had blurted out too many things, and I regretted it, I had to. Admit it, it was okay to open up to her but to a certain extent. I didn't want to scare her, nor. Nor that I thought that for me she was a simple sex toy, because she was not, the. I loved her, I simply needed to have her close to her, to touch her, to feel her curious fingers on me. Stomach or clinging to my back, her sweet lips on my skin, feeling her mine and. Get fed up with that special connection we had together. I had been with hundreds of. Girls throughout my life, I had done things with them that were better not to mention and. She had also treated them far below what they deserved and none of them, not one. Alone, she had made me feel not even a quarter of what Noah did to me with a simple. Look. Losing her, it hurt me just thinking about it, it scared me with fear, it was a feeling. Heartbreaking feeling that oppressed my chest, as if I had two giants sitting on my chest. Heart. Since my mother left, that heartbreaking emotion had not reappeared, I. I had closed off others so much, I had refused to feel anything so much, that now I was. Exposed, exposed to having my heart broken by that amazing girl. Then I looked at what he had drawn on my wrist in a sweet, tingling. Warmth took over my entire body. It was his, he had put it on, he had written it on my skin and I understood that nothing would make me. Happier than belonging to him body and soul, in every sense of the word. I knew that my gaze had darkened, clouded by my feelings and by the irrational desire to keep her with me, by my side forever. I couldn't control how. I didn't even feel like her love for her continued to grow by leaps and bounds. I'm going to let you go, for now, I clarified when I saw that she blinked in surprise, but you know that this isn't going to last long, when I want something, you sin. I just do it. With me, I don't care who has to take me ahead. Her eyes narrowed and she shifted restlessly under my body. Would you take me ahead? Her question distracted me for a few moments. I carry you in my heart, love, there is no safer place than that. Aren't you going to shower? She asked me while she put a t-shirt over my head. 
Is this a hint about my hygiene or something? I said, smiling at the boots. Her as she finished tying my laces. Noah was still wearing my t-shirt and his hair was messy. We always arrived. Late and I couldn't understand why she didn't take advantage of me getting ready to do what she did. Same. There she was, sitting on my bed and watching me with amusement. I thought you would run to delete my Monet, he said, catching my attention. I smiled and stood in front of her on the end of the bed. Her foot rested. Calmly on the white sheets, spotless and perfect, like every part of his. Body of her. I will carry these little drawings that you have made with pride, freckles, you have made them, what less. I have to leave them until they are erased. I stretched out my hand and lifted his foot, placing it on my chest and massaging her ankle. She observed me with insight what's more, this elephant that you've made me here, I said, lifting my shirt and pointing to one of my obliques. I think it gives me an air of quite interesting manly. Her eyes stayed where my skin was exposed and a mocking smile appeared on my face. I pulled her ankle dragging her to the end of the bed, watching as her shirt rode up to the bottom of her breasts. Her sweet, flat stomach was free for her to contemplate along with her white lace underwear that caused tachycardia. Do you see something you like? I said, leaning down and tenderly kissing her navel. I watched as she closed her eyes for a moment. How could she smell so exquisitely good? You, she answered simply. But we didn't have time for that, I pulled her, with a superior smile and I forced her legs to wrap around her hips. I had to get her out of that room. I crossed the hallway until I entered the kitchen. I smiled and placed it on the counter. She did. He grimaced as he noticed the cold marble on her skin. I left her there while she started to take out things from the counter to prepare breakfast. I felt her eyes following each one of us. My movements. I pulled out a bowl of fruit, squeezed oranges, and beat eggs to make them scrambled. Can I help you? She told me and I shook my head. Let me make you breakfast one last time, I replied, unable to avoid throwing a glare at him. Withering look. She cowered where she stood but she didn't say anything. When everything was ready on the small kitchen island I picked it up again and I sat on my lap in front of the table. Her arm went around her neck and while she was playing, I absent-mindedly fed him with my hair, immersed in my own thoughts. She. She ate what she gave her, also distracted by whatever was going through that little head. I was aware that no matter how good a face we both put on, what had happened. Last night she was still present like a ghost wandering around her. Nervous, I grabbed her by the neck of her and forced her head back. I joined my lips with his, savoring the freshly squeezed orange from her delicious mouth. She was surprised by my outburst but she kissed me back. Her tongue curled with mine at the same time that my arm surrounded her tightly, pulling her towards me. When I moved away from her I touched my forehead to hers and our eyes met. She had that honey color that melted me, and I felt the irrational urge to lock her in my room and not let her get out of it. I love you, Noah, don't ever forget it. Her gaze shone in that incredible way and I let her fingers caress my skin, her face, cheeks, and my lower lip. She seemed to be lost in thought and when she went to push her hand away from her I held it and I brought it to her lips. I kissed each of her knuckles carefully and then forced her to continue eating what she had. She had on the plate. If before she was thoughtful now she had completely lost it. Some passed. Minutes until she decided to speak. If I ask you something, will you do it? She asked me then. No, I said simply. Nick. She began but the street with a quick pick as she picked me up and left her. On the chair where she had been sitting. I picked up the plates and turned my back away from her. I did not want to. Promise nothing more, and even less right now. What time do you have class? I asked her without letting her speak. At 12.30, but. I took you, now get dressed. 
I ignored the way her lips pursed and watched her leave the kitchen and enter my room. Room. She leaned me against the counter and I crossed my arms. I had no idea why. What, but I knew that whatever she was going to ask me, she wasn't going to give me any damn. Funny. There's no time to stop by the residence, Nick, she told me, shifting in her seat. The. I looked out of the corner of my eye and continued without taking the detour to the college. I wanted to see where she was. Staying, and since we were helping her carry up some of the boxes that were still in my. Car. Weren't you coming in at half past twelve? I asked without taking into account her silence. Yes, well, but there is no need to go to the residence, we could go have a coffee or... something. I looked at her out of the corner of my eye and saw how she began to play with her hair nervously. Is there anything else you have to tell me? I asked, turning and entering the area. Residential. I had never been here, during my first year of college, when my father. He still had no idea of the things he did, he had lived in a sorority house. It was crazy, but I soon moved to my dad's house again, and then to my apartment. This student residence thing was something new and I was curious. Noah sighed next to me and when I parked in front of the Hendrick building, he quietly got out. Rush I followed her and met her in front of her car. Well, shall we meet tomorrow for dinner or something? I reached out and brushed a strand of her hair behind her ear. Are you trying to get rid of me? Of course not, but my roommates don't like it very much that we bring. Guys to the room, that's why it's better that we have a coffee. I want to see your room, I said simply, taking her hand and pulling her towards the stairs I need to know where we are going to hook up from now on. I laughed when I saw how Noah blushed. As soon as I entered, the smell of pre-cooked and musty food caught my attention. There was a small reception without any receptionist sitting at the desk and stairs. They were in a hidden corner, with part of the carpet hanging out. Noah walked ahead of me and started up the steps. When I reached the landing I saw that there were people in the corridors, the distance from one room to another was almost non-existent. I frowned when I saw a group of guys shouting in the next room. Noah watched me, biting his lip, and stopped in front of his door. First of all, you have to know that I am waiting for them to answer me about another slightly bigger room. I nodded, watching her without transmitting anything at all. And I want you to know that I love my new colleagues, they are super nice, and they're twins, she added as if that could interest me in the slightest. Besides, they are not. The thing is, are you going to open once and for all? He fell silent, pressed his lips tightly together, and did as he asked. I followed her reluctantly. My eyes took in absolutely everything in less than a second, because in a second. It gave you time to see absolutely everything. This had to be a fucking joke. The room was smaller than the one I had in my apartment and here. Three people slept together, there were no individual rooms, no kitchen or living room. Sitting on the bed on the left were two identical girls with a computer on them. Knees and looking at the screen. Hello, girls, Noah said, avoiding my gaze. He's my boyfriend, Nicholas. They smiled at me while I started counting to a thousand inside my head. This is Kate and Kylie, Noah continued saying. I watched them, feeling how my silence made the temperature of the room. Will drop several degrees. My eyes continued to observe the horrible details, there was only one. Table, dwarf in a corner, posters of who knows what singer and worst of all, the most horrible and traumatizing, the bunk beds. Bunk beds. I need to talk to you alone, I said, turning around and leaving. I stayed in the hallway and leaned against the opposite wall. I crossed my arms and I stared. You were rude, she said, although I knew she was trying to keep it together. Calm down for me. I looked around, at the screams of the assholes on the other side of his wall, at those guys who would arrive drunk at any time of the night, I imagined Noah, me. Noah in his pajamas waking up in the morning and going to shower, crossing these 
filthy hallways, showing his bare legs, with those shorts that were. I insisted on carrying it everywhere, I imagined thousands of horrible situations, situations. That drove me crazy in less than a second, and worst of all, I imagined Noah in. That bed, surely very uncomfortable without space or privacy, with how special it was. With his personal space, this had to be his worst nightmare and he knew it, he knew better than to. He wanted to be here, but he would do it, he would do it because he believed he had no choice. Hate. His mother, his damn mother for wanting her daughter to live here instead of with me, in a comfortable, large and spacious place with me to care for her and adore her, as she deserved. I took a deep breath to calm myself. You're not going to sleep here, I said, conveying all the calm I was capable of in my voice. He rolled his eyes and then looked back at me. It is what there is after having given such little notice and it is not so bad. I took a step forward. Do you want to cause me to have a cardiac arrest? I said and glared at the small group of girls who were. They looked out to see what was happening. I lowered her tone of voice and got closer to her. You can't. Put me through this, freckles, no way, you don't even have your own bathroom and we both know. Very well you enjoy taking a shower, when you do it it gives me time to go out. Run, have a snack and play with the fucking cat, so stop this nonsense and come on. With me until you find something else. Noah snorted. I'm not a little princess in trouble, Nicholas, do I like to take long showers? Yes, but. I have been without them all my life, the problem is that I have gotten used to living in your home, but this doesn't bother me. I think I have been as understanding as I could, don't do this to me, don't stay. In this shitty place, do you see me visiting you here? Do you see me sleeping with you in that bunk bed? I said, almost suffering a shiver. A smile appeared on his face and I had to muster all my self-control not to show him how serious my words were. Don't be a snob, Nick, besides, who told you that you're going to sleep here? In any case. I would go to your apartment. Finally you say something coherent, you're coming to my apartment, now, I said, taking her hand and pulling her. And I'll pay for being a snob another time, I added but stopped when. See that she didn't take a step. Stop, Nick, she said simply, take a deep breath, look around you and notice that it's not so bad. Too bad, it will only be a few months until they give me a single room. Sometimes I was surprised at how little he seemed to know me. After a year of dating, she could already tell how I took this guy. Of things. I pursed my lips thoughtfully. Noah stood on tiptoe and kissed me on the cheek. Stop thinking about it, he whispered in my ear. I closed my eyes, put my hand around her waist. Hand of her and pulled her towards me. One of these days you're going to kill me, I said, biting her ear. I'm leaving, I added, releasing her and wanting to fix this matter. Noah seemed to relax instantly, he gave me a hug and a kiss and waved me goodbye. A hesitant smile. I left that building without a second of doubting what I had to do. Noah is going to kill you, Lion said as he let them finish. Don't you like it? I asked him with a mocking smile and feeling incredibly good. He had been perfect. You are becoming a softie. This is going to end up affecting your reputation, now. You'll see, he added while he picked up the basketball and tried to put it in the basket that was stuck on the door. I ignored his comment and got up. I needed to finish other matters. I'm not the one who goes crying on the corners, Lion, I reminded him, ignoring the puncture of guilt. Lion was now going hard, that he didn't care about anything or anyone, and that he didn't even care. It occurred to me to mention that name started with J. Because then we did mess up. You're an idiot, he replied, throwing the ball and making it hit with the instrument. That was in the corner. I grabbed my jacket, put it on and walked out knowing he would follow me. My car was parked right next to it, we got in and while I was reversing. I knew something was on his mind. I've thought about selling the workshop, he said a minute later. I turned to him. That. 
The workshop was the most important thing Lion had, it was his business, his family's business. Lion kept his eyes on the road, shifting his foot nervously. I want to fix things with whoever you know, he said with a small mouth. I rolled my eyes. I think you're going the wrong way if you don't even call her by her name. I'm still mad at her, he said, snorting. But her father called me. Last night. I took my eyes off the road to look at him in disbelief. And what did he tell you? Mr. Tavish has always treated me well, he doesn't look at me with all those rich people, anymore. You understand me, he's a legal guy. Greg Tavish was a great man and he had raised his children impeccably. Jenna was the way she was because she had never lacked anything. Even I had felt. Envy when we were kids. Well that, we were talking, you know, at the beginning because I wanted to know why. Jenna no longer talked about me at her house and also because her little girl had been crying for two. Nights in a row without stopping. I looked out of the corner of my eye and saw that even though I didn't want that for Jenna, knowing that it hurt her. Separation and that he was not the only one having a hard time, it was a relief to him. He told me that he would give me a position in his company, I would start from the bottom, of course. I would have to take an exam, and climb over the years, that guy is a machine nick. You should have heard him talk, he looks so confident, so intelligent, normal than Jenna. I adored him, you know? Who doesn't want a father like that? I stared at the car in front of me. You do not tell me anything? My mind had strayed into dark terrain, I couldn't help but compare my father. With Greg, nor the acceptance of his parents for his relationship and that lion was a boy from the street, a great guy yes, but at the end of the day a man without resources, without studies. Jenna's father accepted it even that way, and I had to fight with claws and teeth to accept me into my own family. I think it's the best thing that could have happened to you, buddy, I replied with a smile. I watched him and for the first time in years I saw him feel confident. Calm flooded my best friend's green eyes. Chapter 45 Noah I spent the next three days without seeing Nick. We kept in touch, we talked. At night and he would send me messages that made me blush in class, but I didn't. We had been able to find a space to see each other. I spent those days getting to know my classmates better and hanging out with Jenna. I wasn't leaving. Clubbing or anything like that but in the surroundings of the faculty there were several bars that. They were very good, as long as you arrived before rush hour, otherwise it was impossible. Fine table at that moment I was with the twins, Jenna and her partner from. Room at Ray's the trendy bar. We had come early and that's why we had one of the best tables. A. A small group of boys were playing pool just a few meters away and were. It was very clear that they were trying to get our attention. Five pretty girls without any guy. Around us, was reason enough for them to want to start a conversation. One of the twins, Kylie, kept saying that she had fallen in love with one of them. Of one with red hair, thin and a little gangly but he was quite cute. She made me. Funny how in less than five seconds she had already created an entire movie in her. Head of her. I think we would call the first one Fred, you know, I've always liked Harry. Potter and surely our children would inherit his red hair. Come up and tell him that you already know the name of his first child. I'm sure you'll make him fall in love with that. Jenna told him that she had not stopped drinking and she seemed. She was disgusted by every look we received from the opposite sex. I couldn't help but laugh, the twins had a very different sense of humor then. Jenna's sarcasm, they were sweeter, warmer, and above all quite inexperienced. They reminded me of Kat. One of them had never had a boyfriend, nor had she been with any boy. Jenna's face had been a poem when Kate had confessed it without no kind of qualm. Never ever, roommate Jenna repeated again. Kate lifted the straw to her lips and sipped from her glass. It's not the end of the world, you know. Where do we boys come from? Either they are ugly or they are. Asshole, and I'd rather be alone than with a brainless asshole. 
Honey, guys don't have brains, there is only one thing that is worth it about them and you. I assure you that it is on the opposite side of your head. I laughed again when I saw how Kate blushed and how her sister sighed again. The redhead. Hey, Noah, there's someone who won't stop looking at you, Kylie said, turning to me. I couldn't. I stopped my neck from turning around waiting to see Nick. I found myself with totally different eyes, it wasn't Nick at all and just like. Said the twin, she didn't stop looking at me. He was tall and blonde and held the pool cue as if it were another member of his body. The strangest thing of all is that it looks familiar to me. I stopped looking at him and focused on my friends. Maybe he's in my class, but I don't remember well, I said, shrugging my shoulders. Jenna leaned out so she could stare at him shamelessly. I have seen that guy, I think leaving the cafeteria we have in the building. Biology and I assure you that he is not in first grade, in fact I think he is a teacher, a, eh, at least. Better he give you some class or something. A class? Nothing of that. I looked at him surreptitiously through his hair and seeing that he was focused on the game. Leaning over the table and aiming at a ball, I was able to look at it more freely. No. She was sure he wasn't any teacher, he was too young for that, although he didn't. As much as to be in first. I tried to rack my brain to find out where. I knew him but it was impossible for me. After a few minutes of pondering, we left the topic and continued talking about trivialities and how Kate was wasting her years of youth and beauty without sleep with any guy. Listen to me carefully, there is no Prince Charming, okay? The novels, M-I-E-N-T-E-N. -E Stop reading Fifty Shades of Grey because you know what? The most a man will do. Uncle for you is to take you to Burger King and pray that you order the savings menu. I rolled my eyes and took advantage of the fact that there wasn't much of a line at the toilets to go to the bathroom. Service. To get there I had to walk past the pool tables and... Having already forgotten about the mysterious guy, I was surprised when he intercepted me in the middle of... I walk, forcing me to stop. Hello, he said simply, looking at me curiously. Hello, I responded, looking at his face and immediately remembering where I had found him. Scene. It had been at that party she had gone to with Jenna, the same night Nick. He had returned from San Francisco and had picked me up on the street. I'm sorry, I didn't want to approach you like that, but I seem to remember that you were with my brother. Little a few days ago, at a party, am I wrong? I nodded. Yes, we are in class together, I answered. He nodded, he didn't remember his name but he had approached us in a very bad way ways. I would like to ask you a favor, my brother is a specialist in disappearing and not showing. Signs of life, if you see him in class could you remind him to call me? It is important. I nodded watching as he took his wallet out of it and searched for something inside. I know it's a lot to ask, but I don't know anyone else who hangs out with him in class, yeah. Do you ever notice that he is strange or that he is not feeling well, can you call me at this? Number? I took the card he held out to me. Sure, don't worry, I replied when I noticed he was so overwhelmed. There's nothing wrong with you, right? I like Charlie too much to lose him as a friend, the last few days I. I had laughed more than I had in a century, I loved his constant good humor and how he laughed at. Everyone and also himself without any malice. Charlie's brother smiled toothlessly in what he assumed was a clearly not wanting to talk about it. Nothing you need to worry about. His response might have seemed unfriendly but he told me in such a tone of voice. Transparent and friendly that I could only smile back before he. He would disappear back the way he had come. When I looked down and looked at the card, my hair stood on end. Michael O'Neill. Psychologist, psychiatrist. It didn't take me long to go to the residence, I was tired and couldn't stop thinking about what Charlie's brother had told me. The psychologist issue was still hanging in a place of pending tasks and that he had no intention of completing. Nick me. He had asked her to please do it for him, and although he had accepted, he hated the idea of having to open up to a stranger, 
having to tell him my greatest fears and intimacies. No. He was a person who would find it easy to tell his problems, much less to a. Unknown, but I was also aware that the nightmares continued, my fear of. Darkness was something present in my day, I had even had to ask the twins. That they would let me put a lamp next to my bed. I knew it was something I couldn't. Keep postponing, but I was terrified that someone would analyze me or judge me or. He said I was completely crazy. My mother had tried to take me on more than one. Occasion, she had even gone as a child, but she had cried so much in those doctors' consultation. That finally my mother had given up, she had bought me little night lights for my room and so on until now. Of course, nightmares were something relatively new, something that had arisen as a result of seeing my father die at my feet. I got into bed and looked at the card again. Was this some kind of sign? He. This Michael seemed like a good person, and most importantly, he was not someone too old. That gave me confidence because the sessions could be simple conversations. Between friends. He wanted to talk to Charlie first, plus he wanted to know why his brother. I was worried about him, although telling Charlie about my problems wasn't something I was willing to do. Was prepared. I knew that if I ended up telling him I would look for any excuse to convince myself. That his brother wouldn't be a good psychologist for me, so I finally decided to call him. Directly to him, ask him about his therapy and see if he could become my psychologist. My psychologist, how horrible it sounded, but I did it for Nick, yes, I did it for him, because. Deep down I knew that nothing and no one was going to be able to cure me. Mine came from the factory. There are things that remain very buried, wounds that do not heal but do heal and that. No matter how much you do to get rid of them, they always end up leaving a mark. The next day after morning classes I looked for a space and called. Michael. I told him my problem in summary, without specifying much and he told me that it was. One of the campus psychologists. He had been working for the university for two years and. He encouraged her to go to his consultation. I didn't know anything about Charlie, because he hadn't shown up for class. Although I assured him that he didn't usually go in the mornings. Despite the nerves, I felt a little relieved to have taken that small step. Now I just had to go and see how it went, and above all see if I felt comfortable being with him and telling him my things. I spent the rest of the morning in the faculty cafeteria. I had a knot in my stomach, I was nervous, so I just ordered a cup of coffee and took out a book that we had to read in class. The atmosphere of that cafeteria. It was a bit overwhelming, and that's why I chose one of the tables that were furthest away. It wasn't until after a while that a strange sensation settled in my mind. Stomach. As if my body was capable of feeling it, I looked up and saw it. There was. Nick, entering the coffee shop with a disposable coffee cup in his hand and his laptop. Mac in the other. And worst of all, it wasn't just me who noticed his arrival. Table who was next to me, with five girls who would not shut up even under the water, began to whisper and look at him shamelessly. I looked around, watching closely from my privileged position, and I verified that the table next to me was not the only one that was pending my boyfriend. Nick walked through the crowd to sit at a table where a a group of boys received him with the usual blows on the back. My god, it's so good, seriously, just looking at it makes me super nervous, said one of the girls next to me. I got tense almost immediately. He's my future husband, so you can take your eyes off him now, said another and they all turned. They laughed. This reminded me of Kylie and how she used to drool over the cute boys on campus. No. She had been aware that Nick was obviously not invisible, and he was incredibly handsome, just. You had to look at how he was wearing, with those pants that fell over his hips, those t-shirts. That stuck to him slightly, highlighting his muscular arms, and the worst of all is. That he was wearing his reading glasses, those glasses that looked so incredibly. Sexy, those glasses that she thought she only wore when she was in his apartment, when she was with me. 
Part of me wanted to run and claim him as my own, but I had never been able to. Have this vantage point to be able to observe him and see how he behaved when I was not. Honestly, he seemed to be outclassed by his table mates, they didn't. They stopped making a fuss while he was focused on whatever he was reading on his computer. Two girls joined his table and looked at him provocatively. A. One of them said something to him, Nick looked up and smiled at him. She smiled at him. An intense heat formed inside me. There must be some defect, said another girl next to me. The only flaw he has is that he throws himself at everything that moves, I would never want him. As a boyfriend, the truth is, besides just having him in front of me would make my words freeze. I would become a complete idiot, I'm serious. He throws himself at everything that moves. As if Nick had heard those very words, he raised his head from the computer and his eyes met mine in the distance. He would have made me a fool, or distracted but I wanted him to see me, I wanted to see what he was doing now that I was in his his territory, in his faculty, where everyone knew him and talked about him. An amused smile appeared on his lips. I just stood looking at him. His looking at us, said someone from the next table and I heard them start to laugh. Like fools. Nick got up, took his things and without taking his eyes off mine he headed towards. Where he was he. I was clearly aware of how many girls followed him without losing sight of him. View. I lowered my eyes to the book and waited to see what he would do. I heard clearly as my chair. Side moved and he sat down. Hello, he said simply and without waiting for my response he took my chair and placed it so. That we were half facing each other, with my legs almost touching his knees. The girls at the next table were now looking at us dumbfounded. I watched him and felt butterflies in my stomach. I couldn't help it, his presence just as which for the entire female sector, revolutionized my hormones. Hello, I answered a little stiffly. He was used to women looking at him. But he had never witnessed the things they said about him, nor what it was like to experience it from the other side. Side. Obviously when he was with me they looked at him but didn't comment so. I could hear it. He was now aware of the line of girls anxiously waiting for him to. I would screw up so I could take my place. I would never have him as a boyfriend, he fucks everything that moves. I shifted my eyes to my book again, I was too nervous around everyone. Looking at us, and he also hated listening to how people talked about him, as if he were someone. Empty and simply handsome, there was much more to Nick than just his physical appearance. I call this a warm welcome, yes sir, he said, teasing me. I looked back at him and frowned. I didn't know you had class today, or that you would be here, you could have told me. The girls at the next table couldn't stop whispering and laughing and began to touch my nose. I wasn't planning to come, but I had to hand in a job, now that we don't live together. I have a lot of free time. His eyes looked at me in that dark way that. I remembered everything I was missing now that we weren't living under the same roof. I didn't know you were so popular in college, I said changing the subject because I knew that. It was not convenient for me to enter that type of conversation with hints. Nick shifted his eyes to the girls at the next table. He didn't even want me to look at them. Are you jealous? He asked me, focusing on me again. I didn't want to answer that question, so I leaned over the table and pulled his. His shirt to do the same. I think there are too many people here who have no idea who I am, I told him letting his eyes travel over my face and an amused smile appear on his face. Seductive lips. There is nothing wrong with you claiming what is yours, love. Her words were enough for me. And we both bow almost at the same time until that our lips met. I was aware of how many people were watching us, it's. Furthermore, the silence that fell at the continuous table served to make a smile appear. End on my face. My intention had only been to give him an intense spike, but Nick seemed. Have other plans in mind. He pulled me over and sat me on his lap, not moving even a step. Centimeter. He forced my lips to part, pushing with his tongue and I let him. 
he invaded my mouth. In that position I had my back to almost the entire cafeteria so people. I deduced what we were doing but without actually putting on a show. Nick me. He nibbled the lower lip, sucked and pressed his lips against mine again. Clearly sealing the message. When I pulled away I saw how all this amused him, and also how the excitement. It obscured his pretty blue eyes. I love it when you get jealous, he said, drawing constant circles with his finger. Thumb on the lower part of my back, that part that left my skin exposed and that he. He had found in less than a second. I felt my skin crawl. Then the touch of something strange brushed against my skin. I frowned and forced him to. Place his arm so he could see it. A white bandage covered his wrist. What happened to you? I asked him with horror. He seemed to hesitate for a few seconds and my concern grew. Nothing, do not worry. Images of Nicholas getting into another fight came to mind, I looked for some. Another trace of violence but his face was impeccable, without a scratch. I noticed there. Fists from him and I didn't see any bruises either. Why do you have a bandage on your wrist, Nicholas? I asked him, changing my tone and getting serious. I throw my head back in a smile that I didn't really know how to interpret. Appeared on his face. Don't freak out or anything like that, okay? I frowned and grabbed his wrist. What have you done? An alarm bell arose inside me. See for yourself, he said, indicating for me to lift the bandage. I did it without waiting a second, and there, a little swollen but clearly visible. There was a tattoo. My god, I said with a broken voice. Nick finished ripping it off and left it on the table. I don't think it's necessary to cover it, don't you think? On his beautiful skin, written in black, imitating my calligraphy, was the same. That I had written three days ago on his body. You are mine. Tell me this isn't a tattoo, I said with my heart in my mouth. Did you really think I was going to let this be erased? He answered me, looking at the tattoo with pride. You're crazy, Nicholas Leister, I said, feeling a lot of mixed emotions. A tattoo, that was forever, a mark on his skin that would always remind him of me, too. Words that claimed him as mine. You were engraved on my skin long before I got the tattoo, this. It is simply a memory of you to always carry, love, do not give it more importance than the one he has. Then I felt afraid. I understood how much that meant and despite his nice words, a familiar pressure in my chest made it hard to breathe. I have to go, I said, starting to get up, but his arm kept me still. Where was he? Nick narrowed his eyes and looked at me seriously. You're freaking out and I didn't mean to, he said, clearly upset. I shook my head, I was suddenly out of breath and needed to get outside. I noticed. As if everyone was watching for my next move. A tattoo is for life, Nicholas, I said with a lump in my throat. You're going to. Regret having done it, I know, you will regret it and then you will hate me because that will. Make you remember me, even when you don't want to and his lips silenced me. With a quick kiss. Although it seemed tender, I felt it tense under my body and his kiss. Hard against my lips. It wasn't my intention to upset you, he said against my lips. But it's my body and I do what. What I want with him. His hands lifted me and he placed me on where he had been sitting. Her hands. They attached themselves to the armrest and I noticed how it created a cage between the back of the chair and him. There are times I don't know what to do with you, Noah, I really don't. I watched as he took his laptop without looking at me and left the way he had come. Shit. Had I hurt his feelings? That night I couldn't sleep, a nightmare managed to keep me awake completely, and this. Maybe it was the memory of that night, the same night that I had to jump out the window to. Escape from my father, the night where I understood that men, for many promises. Whatever they did, they were not people to trust. Nick's disgusted and hurt look was the other reason I couldn't sleep a wink. I felt guilty for having behaved that way, for having reacted that way. It was that. 
Night when I realized that I did need to talk to someone about it, I needed. Someone help me, help me be what Nick needed from me. The next morning I had my first session with Michael O'Neill. Tell me about yourself, Noah, why do you think you need my help? Michael's consultation was not what I had imagined. There were no couches or foreign objects or anything like that, it was a simple office, with a desk in one corner, two black sofas with a small table in the center and cozy white pillows. The curtains of the large window were open and a warm morning light came in. Michael had offered me tea and biscuits and I I felt like I was five years old. I told him briefly what my childhood had been like, the relationship he had had with me, father and the problems he had had with my mother. My intention had not been reveal all my secrets in the first session, but Michael was good at bringing out information without you even realizing it. Without eating or drinking it he had confessed what about my fall out of the window, and the trauma I had with the darkness, I told him that I had recently more than a year I had had to leave my house and move to Los Angeles and I mentioned to Nick. After all, I was there for him. Do you have a boyfriend? He asked me, stopping whatever he was writing on his memo pad. I nodded, shifting restlessly on the couch. Tell me about your relationship with him. The session flew by and I barely had time to tell him much more. Look Noah, he is now helping to get to know you a little better, but we haven't been able to. To get into it, I would like you to start by coming two hours a week, so. You tell me, what worries you most is your nyctophobia, and that can be solved with therapy, you. It would be surprising how many people have the same problem as you, you don't have to feel. Embarrassed, ashamed. I would have liked to tell him that he wasn't, that he just hated having that. Mental block when the lights went out. I wasn't sure if this hour with him had been of any use to me, but I did feel. Comfortable, and that was very important. Michael got up and walked me to his door. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Noah, and I really hope I can help you. I smiled back. The way he spoke, so calm, and the way he looked at me. They conveyed almost absolute calm. I guess he was good at his job. The rest of the day passed quickly, although without any news from Nick. I felt guilty for myself. Reaction to his tattoo, it had simply caught me by surprise and I didn't know what to do to fix it. Plus my mother had been calling me all morning and sending me messages. According to her, I had already punished her enough and she wanted to see me. My answer was. Being clear, he would not see her until he felt that he had forgiven her and until now that. Feeling seemed to be conspicuous by its absence. I wanted to tell Nick that I had started seeing the psychologist, I wanted him to see that my. Relationship was the most important thing, which I was really trying to improve. I didn't get very. Happy to the residents and I was so tired that I almost didn't even realize who I was. I was waiting leaning on his car, next to the entrance. Steve smiled at me in that dry way he used to address everyone. My relationship with the Leaster's security guard had never been anything other than world, what's more, Steve suffered with my behavior because everyone knew that I was not a easy to control person. I felt sorry for frustrating all his attempts to protect me from something non-existent, especially since he knew that those orders came from Nicholas, but at least he was someone who could be trusted no matter what. That's why I miss seeing him there. I tried to think of a coherent reason but nothing justified his presence. Hello, Miss Noah, he said, separating himself from the car. What are you doing here, Steve? I asked him, playing nervously with the car keys. Leaving my Audi was what I missed most about leaving the Leaster house. But one was proud of it and we all knew that mine was quite big. Nicholas has asked me to take her to her new residence. Where? I asked, almost choking. Steve looked at me doubtfully. To his new residence, Noah, the one on the other side of the campus, his things are already there. There, I believed. Don't tell me. I said to no one in particular. 
I didn't let him continue talking. I walked past her and entered the building. At the moment of arrival to the second floor and opened the door I saw that no one was there but that was not all, my things were already. They were not there. I opened my closet, nothing, not my pillow, not my toiletry bag, not my books, not the two boxes that he had put under the bed. This had to be a joke. I looked for my phone in my bag and called Kylie. Hello, Noah, what's going on? Kylie, have either of you been in the room today? I heard the sound of music in the background, today was Friday which meant that the girls would have gone straight to the pub after class. We're partying, come on, boring. I hung up without even answering him. I could NT believe it. Look to see if there was anything. Some of my things, but nothing, they had packed absolutely everything, although there was. A note on my pillow. I have used my contacts to get you a new room, you will only share. Living room and kitchen with a roommate, I know you didn't want things to be done that way, but. I wasn't thinking of letting you live in a dive. Call me when your anger passes. It was clear that he was the one who was angry, and now me. But what did he believe? My god, these were the things that got on my nerves, how? He dared to move me without even consulting me first. I was so angry that I didn't care that Steve walked into the room. I. I turned towards him with sparks in my eyes. This is an invasion of my privacy. I yelled at him, to which he simply returned the gesture. Look, you can't come in here, take my things and take them with you. I just follow orders, Noah, I thought you were aware. Well I wasn't. Steve closed his eyes for a few seconds too long and when he looked at me again something in his. Look made me hold back my screams. I know it may seem crazy, Noah, but Nicholas only did it for the benefit. Yours, I know he is a difficult man to deal with, he is used to getting his way, but. Deep down he is simply in love with you. That is no excuse. I took a deep breath trying to calm myself. Right now I just wanted a shower and a. Bed. Is that residence very far? I asked pressing my hand to my temple. It hurt me. Horrors in my head, and this fact that Nicholas sent Steve instead of coming himself only added to it. Fuel to the fire that had already been brewing between the two for a long time. Dash ten minutes. I nodded and soon got into the car and followed him down the highway. When we arrive and I got off, I was clearly aware that here I was not going to have to share a bathroom or much less sleep in a bunk. The building was made of white brick and was impeccably painted and with well-cut grass. Nodraheim Hall. I went up the stairs and upon entering I saw a young girl behind a reception table. You're Noah Morgan, right? She asked me with a friendly smile. I nodded. Come, I'll show you your apartment. Apartment? I didn't even want to think about how much this was going to cost me. I wasn't going to be able to pay it, didn't Nicholas realize? We went up to the third floor and the girl gave me some keys. Your roommate has not arrived, but she is aware of your arrival. Your room is the one on the right, I hope you're comfortable and anything you need I'm downstairs. Steve took a step forward and proceeded to open the door. When I entered I saw that no. It was nowhere near what he expected. A living room with an American kitchen, small but very. Well furnished was the first thing I saw. In the corner there was a plasma television and the. The sofas were ivory in color, with a thick gray rug covering almost the entire floor. Park. I saw two doors and another in between them. Here you will only have to share a bathroom with your partner. I don't know her name but hey, you'll find out when she arrives. It's okay, Steve, don't worry. I went to the room that would be mine and when I opened it I found all my things. Had. A double bed and a nice wardrobe on the left. It wasn't a giant room. But nothing to do with the room he shared in the Hendrick building. I left the room and faced Steve, who clearly had orders to stay. With me until she was settled. You can tell Nicholas that thanks, but that things are not done this way. 
You should have asked me first. Steve seemed to agree with me and his silence emboldened me. I don't even know if I can afford to live here. Call him and talk to him, Noah, I'm sure he has taken your capital into account. I half smiled at Steve's always elegant way of defending Nick. He. He was everything my boyfriend would never be, but at least I knew he had someone sensible. In his life. Thank you for bringing me. He smiled at me, left the keys on the counter and walked out the door. Now he had to start over.